everyone, in this quick video, we are going to take a look at how to get up and running with Splunk, and it's going to be free, and it's really not gonna matter what operating system you have. This is an old, oh, it is an i7 chip, eight gigs of RAM, and it is the 64-bit Windows 10 that I'm running, Windows 10 Pro. So actually, not that bad of a machine by any stretch, certainly no powerhouse, so let's go and get the free Splunk. You're just gonna go to splunk.com, you're gonna click free Splunk, and you are gonna need to register for a free account. I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my existing account. Alrighty, now that I am logged in, I'm gonna go ahead and click free Splunk, and that is gonna bring me to the download page. Now understand, you're gonna be able to go ahead and download the Enterprise Edition of Splunk. Notice it's bringing me to the Splunk Cloud. They're really pushing Splunk Cloud now, and you can see they default us there for our free trial. So what I'm actually gonna do is go up to Resources because we are interested in downloading the evaluation of the Splunk Enterprise product. In fact, I'll just go to free trials and downloads down here at the very bottom menu. There we go. And so there's Splunk Enterprise free trial. Amazing how they really are pushing us to the cloud now. So notice here, you're gonna be able to download the 64-bit Windows version, but for all of you Linux users, there are your Linux images and your Mac OS uh, installation packages. So definitely do this uh, installation on whatever operating system you happen to be using. Now, a couple of caveats here. In a Linux installation, it is, and also the Mac installation, Splunk will not be set to automatically start. In the Windows environment, ironically enough, Splunk is going to be started each time you recycle your Windows box, and you do that a lot, right? But in the Linux environment, we are not gonna have that happen. We are gonna need to go ahead and set Splunk to start automatically with the Linux system if that's what we're after for a behavior. Alrighty, well, I'll pause the video here as we download the free Splunk and I'll be right back to show you how simple the installation is. You gotta love the magic of television. It was suddenly like I was on a lightning fast internet connection, getting Splunk very quickly. But yes, the download did complete. You can see I'm launching the installer. We're gonna say, uh, okay, we accept the license agreement. And then we're gonna go to customize options. Always a great idea to go through and check out the details of what's happening. Notice Splunk by default is gonna be installed to your program files directory. This is super important because we manage Splunk Enterprise oftentimes using its configuration files. And you gotta be able to find those configuration files and now you know where to look. It's program files and then the Splunk subdirectory. Uh, next up, we are gonna run this uh, little free Splunk as the local system account. Notice you would choose domain account if you were in a domain environment and you needed this Splunk box to reach out and get other resources. Since we'll keep all of our demonstrations and lab work on the local system, using the local system account of Windows will be fine and sufficient. Now this is super important. This is the administrator account that we are going to be using on the Splunk system. You don't want to forget this whatsoever, that would be bad. So you want to go ahead and set an admin username and password right now that you will for sure remember, and then choose next. Create a start menu shortcut, wonderful, and that's it. The installation of Splunk will transpire, and then it will tell you that it's finished, and I'll be right back for us to see what we would do next as far as validation of our Splunk Enterprise install. All right, so the installation finished. Let's go down to the Start button and we'll scroll down and go to the S's. There is Splunk Enterprise. And notice when you launch Splunk Enterprise, it's just taking you to a web page hosted off your local system and it's port 8000 that this Splunk web interface uses. So I'm gonna to go to that Anthony S account that I created when we installed Splunk, and I'm gonna get the password right. 
I'm sure on the first try, beginner's luck, and it looks like I'm successfully logging in for the first time to Splunk Enterprise. And this all looks good, and notice we'll say got it as we get some guidance on how to get the most out of this software. But here we can see, we can click on from the apps on the left-hand side, the famous search and reporting app of Splunk, and we will skip the tour and we can do our first search. So I'll go ahead and take a look at everything that is in the underscore internal Splunk index. So we'll just set the index equal to underscore internal. We'll look at the last 24 hours and we are going to see that there's gonna be a ton of events that appear, already 3,684, and what we're looking at is the internal logging, the Splunking that Splunk is doing of itself. So yeah, Splunk is Splunking itself in order to report to us its health. And one of the things that we can do is I can search for any, oh, any variation of error. So I'll type error asterisk, and then I'll type how about fail asterisk, and we'll make sure that in these internal logs there are no errors or failures. So we'll run this search of the internal logs. Oh, and look at this. We have two events that did match on errors or failures. So just a little demonstration there of how our search capabilities are functioning within this free Splunk that was so incredibly painless to install. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back with more Splunk quick videos for you, including getting some sample data into this Splunk that we just installed so we can see what actual external data would look like inside of the search and reporting interface.